uh, we'll start off with the physics challenge that I have uh, shared in our group. Um, the challenge could be as usual solved in multiple methods, but uh, we will take up one new way of looking at projectile motion, which we didn't in the last three classes. Okay, so this will give us an insight into how we could have solved even the past problems also. Also, more number of methods, I think you would have more insight into the subject. Okay, so with that as agenda, let me share that question. So this was the question that was shared with you. Right. There's a place on ground like in this diagram. It is origin of uh, Y versus X axis as you could see and uh, there is a wall which is 20 meter away. You could see that here, right? So there is a wall here. This is the wall and this is 20 meter away from the origin, right? From this origin point, you're supposed to throw a projectile. Okay, under gravity. Gravity is in particularly downward direction, which is negative y direction in this particular diagram. Okay, right. So I think it's a bullet that he's actually aiming at certain point. So what he's saying is that the aiming is done along this dotted line, right? So can you see the dotted line, right? So that particular dotted line is the direction of aim. So if it were a gravity free space, it would have actually gone along this particular dotted line and hit here. So you were aiming to this position. But as gravity would have its way, uh, the bullet would actually uh, hit somewhere below it because it bends down under gravity and the trajectory will not be a straight line. It would rather be a parabola as we have seen in the past few classes. OK, right. So there is uh, a information that is given, right? The information is you are aiming at a 50 meter high mark that I told you at the top, right at the top of the diagram. And the location of the bullet is shown by a circular dot at some point of the time. You could see by the time it reached half its journey, right? Instead of 10, 20 meter, by the time it reaches half the journey here, right? Half the journey here, you could see that uh, the dot here represents the position, right? So instead of being on this, it has already fallen down by some amount. OK, so if this information is given, you need to tell me where will the bullet on the wall hit. OK, right. So which mark? Right. So you were aiming at the 50 meter mark. Obviously, the answer should be below 50. What number will it hit? Will at what point on this grid will it hit? So this was the explanation for the wording of the question. OK, right. You might have tried it out. OK, so in case you haven't tried and you're looking at this video, right? I would like you to pause the video and then go ahead with some try and then uh, look at the solution that I'm going to share. Right. So the idea is to first of all understand a concept. Uh, right. So this is the kind of concept. So we have already seen two dimensional motion as split into two one dimensional motion, but that split or the components that we took were X and Y component. Right. So uh, that was what we have been doing orthogonal components x y components so there's another way of looking at the displacement vector during a projectile motion we could see the displacement vector i have written it in blue okay right and i am thinking that this is one vector added with another vector that produces displacement vector right so i can think these two are components of that displacement vector but you notice one very simple thing that these two are not orthogonal components okay u bar which is the red colored vector, which is um, being aimed in any projectile motion in one direction, right? And half T square being a positive number, this entire yellow vector would be only in the direction of G bar, which is always vertically downwards. OK, so if I represent the position or displacement vector of the projectile motion at any arbitrary instant here, I have taken it just after the start, right? So sometime you could see the white curve represents the actual path. Whereas if it were somewhere here, then how do you draw the displacement blue vector starting to ending point? You just join a blue color uh, vector, right? So that's your S bar, which you can represent as T into U bar, right? So what does T into U bar mean here, right? What is the physical significance of this? Imagine the G was zero in one particular hypothetical situation, then displacement would have been just T into U bar. So T into U bar suggests the path that the particle would have taken in the absence of gravity. OK, right. And then you can think that half T square into G bar represents a falling vector under gravity if particle was released from rest at this particular position. So you're looking at this blue color displacement vector as sum of 
two vectors which you are taking as the superposition right so one the red one is where when the velocity is there velocity for the particle is there but gravity is not there whereas the second one that is the yellow one you are talking about velocity not there and only gravity existing right so some of these two red and yellow vectors can be representing the blue vector and did this continue so imagine i take it at a later time and the particle actually reaches here there also you could see that the starting tangent this is your t into u bar so let me write the t into u bar that i am representing this is your t into u bar in the same time t right if the particle was dropped from rest at that particular position at the top of this diagram then it would have come down with this much value so the sum of these two what i am trying to say is your s bar so this is another way of writing or thinking of the superposition of two vectors so what uh, th these two these two still are components of s bar with a superposition but they are not orthogonal Okay, so that's the concept we are going to use in the question. Okay, so uh, this whatever question that I have posted right now could be solved without this, but I just wanted to take this as an opportunity to introduce this concept. Okay, so I've zoomed the diagram that he has given in the question. Okay, and let's try to apply whatever we just saw in that concept. Okay, right. So from that particular pro, uh, concept to this diagram i think my red vector is this if i had i think this would be your red vector at, up till that point so in the absence of gravity by the time it reaches this particular mark it would have reached this position okay but it falls under gravity under a similar time i think a yellow vector is not visible so let me make it even more bolder so i hope you can see that yellow vector right so that's your half gt square okay so he's asking you if this was the fall in the half gt square so i would like you to imagine that it's how much fall is there one grid fall okay it has fallen by one grid so what would have happened if i had allowed it for up till this position okay right now realize one very interesting thing here that the time taken the time taken for this and this are equal to each other right the time taken for this if it is t and the time taken for this part also is t because horizontal displacements are covered in equal intervals of time okay right so which means the time that you will substitute in this fall would be t right and then the same time that you will substitute in the fall from here would be 2t so i don't know how much so it has i have to go down by a 2t okay right so remember this in terms of uh, displacement in terms of the displacement you should be marking it as half gt square right so um, i'll try to use a darker color here so that you can see so i would say this is equivalent to half gt square and this also is equal to half g now i would say 2t whole square so if half gt square gives rise to one grid fall in this you could see it has fallen down by one grid here then half g into 2t whole square should fall by four grids okay four grids so 1 2 3 and 4 so it should have reached here okay right so i hope you appreciate that and what i just said i'll impress upon you using that four grid rule that i just saw so it should have covered this much fall so the particle will hit here and what point is that i think it's a 30 meter mark so this is a pictorial way of solving the question you could have done trajectory equation and time equation or you could have even split this motion into x component and y component and all that you should be able to do right so then also you would be able to get the same uh, answer right so okay just a second i think we went somewhere wrong here uh, the time taken from here to here just a second so half gt square
So what are the options given? 20 meter, 25 meter? Yeah, that's it. Perfect. Okay, right. So let's go to that. So the option C is the correct answer. 